Hey everybody and welcome back to another episode of the JRPG Report. My name is Dalton and joining me as always is my good buddy. Hey, it's Michaela from Team Retro. Happy 2024. How the heck are you, Dalton? Sir, I'm tired. Work has been a lot, but I'm alive. <laughs> I'm getting over being sick. If you can't hear it in my uh, in my voice and my my cough, so uh, th- that's been fun. I did not get to enjoy New Year's at all. Uh, I was in bed with a like hundred and three fever. Oh, jeez! Like uh, to to put it to you shortly, I was wearing. Um, I have these like sweatpants, but they're like fuzzy on the inside, so they're super warm. So wearing those, I was wearing a pair of normal socks with a pair of fuzzy big socks over them. Um, I was wearing a shirt, a long sleeve shirt with a shirt over that with my hoodie on with my work gloves on with the hood up laying in bed under two blankets. And I still couldn't get my hands and my feet to warm up. That is the absolute worst. Like my There's feet, literally nothing you could do about it. My feet were so cold. I started worrying about diabetes. Oof. Which I don't think I have, but I was just like in this delirious fever mind. I'm like, oh, I'm too fat. Uh, my feet are going to fall off. They're not getting blood. And then my dad actually lost a toe toward the end of his life. He lost like his middle toe on his like left foot because he had diabetes for like several years. He, he had diabetes when I was born and I'm like in my 40s. I, I've i never been diagnosed with it or anything. But uh, there are times where I feel like I can feel my sugar drop. Yeah. Where, like, all of a sudden, I get really cold. Like, like shivering and, like, my body tenses up and curls up into a ball. Like, Oof. and, like, my, my stomach and my ab muscles tense up. It's, like, it, it's, it's weird, man. I don't know what causes it. Uh, and it doesn't happen super often, which is nice. But it, it hits me a lot, like, when there's a big temperature drop. So like my room gets warm because of all these screens and my computer. Yeah. And then I'll walk out into the actual rest of the house and it'll be like 10 degrees cooler. And all of a sudden I'm just like, and I just think it's because my body's probably toasty. But then again, I don't know. It might be something weird going on. Um, Other than gentlemen, meet Dalton, the only person in Florida who can't get warm. Oh, I can get warm. uh, Just, in those in those moments, it's 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 hard to. Uh, yeah, well, but, especially not, nobody could get warm when you have the flu. That just downright stinks. Oh, it the was, only thing you could do is power through it, and you're just yeah. It's like you said, you have like these weird fever dreams, and you just you're just shivering for like what seems like hours. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I will say one thing that I watched when I was uh, getting over it that like m- warmed me up inside was a shout out to a YouTube channel, PlayStation Access. It is the uh, official PlayStation UK YouTube channel. Um, Dave from that is doing his first ever playthrough of Final Fantasy VII, the original. Wow. And uh, the episode one came out last Monday. So it was like I was checking that out. Uh, and dude, I'm telling you, like, I went for one, I went back to work way too soon after being sick. Yeah, but I totally get it. New job and all that. You don't want to take too many days off. Yeah, and the fact that I I was supposed to work on New Year's Day and had to call out. Yeah, I remember that you telling me that. And um, she, uh, do you, what? Oh, you're going to knock the mic and say hello? I got a new puppy. I was going to say, you got, you got some big news to share. Yeah, I got a new puppy. She's an Australian Shepherd. Her name is Lilith. She's adorable. Oh, into, look at that face. You want to breathe into the microphone? You're already making a bunch of noise. <laughs> Listen, last podcast, it was my son. This podcast, it's your puppy. My daughter. Yeah, your daughter. My dogder. Your dogder. <laughs> no, I thought it was so, a big yawn. Oh, thankfully, um, thankfully, my kid is hopefully asleep by now. He has been fighting sleep, something fierce. He just does not want to go to sleep at night. That was me as a kid. So I can really? relate. I can relate to him. Yeah. No. He just he don't he doesn't want to go to sleep. But he's at this weird age now where like 
he just wants to touch and get into everything. So he takes so much of our energy that we just get to a point where we're like, you need to go to bed because we're exhausted. <laughs> How old is he? He's three. That's what I thought. A- I thought it was like two or three. Yeah, he's three. He's going to be four in August. Hopefully he'll mellow out. Hopefully so. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Fingers crossed. Because, man, if he doesn't drain the heck out of me, I I, I don't know who does. <laughs> uh, one other thing I want to plug before I see how you've been doing, my good sir, is over on the over on the Steam Machine podcast, we are currently playing through Nexamon Extinction, which is a Pokemon-like game that is very... Spoilers, real good. Surprisingly good. Yeah, and uh, I'm uh, I'm weaseling my way into that episode, so if you want to hear more Mikhailov, Mikhailov, tune into the Steam Machine podcast next week. Yeah. Come come check us out. We uh the downloads always the downloads always help. And it's a really entertaining game. I think you'll really uh it'll be a fun episode to do. It's funny how I'm approaching a game like that. I don't want to say too much because I wanna save some for that episode. But it's just funny how I'm approaching that game like I approached Pokemon Blue. Like, it's all completely new. Like, mechanics are new. Creatures are new. So I'll just run into a random creature and be like, you know what? I like you. Catch. And then I'll just completely shift my team around to accommodate it. But, like, I don't even know how the type charts work. Like, it's not the same. It's got completely different mechanics. And it makes fun of Pokemon like you wouldn't believe. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> like, it legit throws digs at Pokemon that just crack me the heck up. While also taking the, well, I don't want to use that term, uh, taking the poo out of themselves. Mm. Yes. As well. Yeah, they make fun of themselves as well, which is, I don't know, it's it's a good time. I didn't think it was going to be, but I'm actually surprisingly enjoying my time with the game. So, more to come next week, but there's a little... uh little taste, a little teaser. Yeah, for sure. So how you doing, buddy? I'm doing all right. Uh, we've been home since Friday. Because Friday I uh, took a sick day because we had a social worker come into the house to check on my son on Friday. Because we're in the... We're finally getting to the, the adoption process now. And... We had uh, a lawyer come to the house today, so the, the house was just a disaster. I just needed to clean it. So that's what I did on Friday. And then we had the three-day weekend because uh, we were all off for Martin Luther King. And then we got a snow day today. Yeah, so that's what's up. I have been cooped up in my house. I'm ready to go back to work, <laughs> which is, is an odd thing to say. But, yeah, I, I need to get out of here. Um. And yesterday was especially rough because Final Fantasy XIV was down. And it <laughs> oh, was no. down for like 24 you... hours because they were implementing the new patch. So literally like my whole Monday, I'm just refreshing ARR status. And when I realized it just isn't going to hit until what was this morning, I went and played some other stuff. I played some Nexomon. I played some Dave the Diver. Uh, just... Fixed my streaming setup in my house because I was having this weird issue where if I was streaming from my computer to... Uh, either a handheld or, or my television, I would have this weird uh, input thing where my controller just would stop working for two seconds and then start working again. Finally fixed that. And I took a three-hour nap today. God, aren't those the best? Oh, that, I woke up feeling like I've gotten more sleep than I have in the last like several days. Good. I'm glad to hear that. You probably needed it, my good sir. I, I needed it. Uh, other than that, uh, I am playing way too much Final Fantasy fourteen. I've completely done with the main story, and that includes this new patch. I tackled that within like an hour. I have all my crafters and my gatherers at 90. I have my Dragoon and my Reaper are at 90. And now I'm just working on uh, the gear grind. And I'm already like halfway through the gear grind. So that's what's up. I'm, I'm enjoying that game. I don't know why I can't put it down. But I am going to make a concerted effort to try to beat Nexomon this week. I, I don't know how f- close I am to beating it, dude. But yeah, it's worth your time. 
Yeah, I think even if I don't beat it, I've got mm. plenty to talk about just because I've been spending a lot of time trying to learn the mechanics and, and that kind of stuff. Hunt monsters. Figure out, like, the best ways to go about that game. Because I actually messaged uh, the group at one point because I was struggling to figure out how to level up. And then I realized, wait, this is old Pokemon. This is supposed to take forever. Yeah. Yeah. And trainers are your, your friend when it comes to the experience bumps. Yeah. So that was also part of what I've been doing is I've been just running around trying to find trainers and to find out that they respawn. Like, yeah, they, they, you can go back and fight them again. It's fantastic. Yeah, that's a nice little touch. I agree. It's, it's, it's definitely a little love, nice little love letter slash parody. And I, I will make every effort to, to beat that this week. As a matter of fact, it's midterms this <laughs> week. So, hey, kids, take your midterm. I'll play some next one on. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Get I'm some solid play time. I'm probably not going to do that because watch the one time the boss comes in. But, man, if only. Right. Get it in on your lunch break or something. Yeah, that's usually what I do. Is like during my prep time or my lunch time, I'll I'll bring the Odin into my buddy's room and we'll just he'll he's sitting playing the Dave the Diver on his Steam Deck. I'll just pop something on real quick. Usually it's uh something I could pick up and play within a couple of minutes. So shall we? Uh, Get into oh, some should news? we? Should we uh, talk about uh, the future of the JRPG report? Oh yeah. Yeah, not, the, not that that sounds more ominous than it needs to, but um Yeah, no, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said it that way. It's not go we're not leaving you. We, we promise we're not going away. No, but we are going to because just the with scheduling with between work and doing the steam machine and things like that. Um I don't have a ton of time like I used to, so we are going to switch to bi-weekly uh for the JRPG report. So it'll be on the off weeks of the Steam Machine podcast. So if you listen to both, you'll be fine. You'll have some content every single week. Um, but yeah, that's just going to be the the easiest thing on me. But what that means for you guys is that there's going to be, you know, bigger chunks of news and stuff for you guys to listen to. So it'll be fun. Yeah. Gives us some time to make sure that we're covering as much as we can, as well as make sure that we're not burning ourselves out. Yeah. Yeah. That, 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 that That's the big thing is uh trying to do one of these every week on top of working you know eight to ten hours a day five to six days a week like that was it was a lot so like just uh being able to do like one show and be able to focus on that each week instead of trying to like focus on two every other week it, it, i think it'll be easier yeah i agree for me as well so just because <clears throat> work life all that but we're still gonna get you some news we're hopefully not disappointing anybody yeah, and I will I will try to get more consistent with uh, Sunday specials as well. Um, whether we do it on uh, something extra or we do like a soundtrack or something like that, I will try to uh, do more of those to compensate. But uh, yeah, and we can probably work that out ahead of time. Like maybe one night when we're recording an episode, we'll just stay up a little bit later and do a Sunday special. Yeah, I mean that would that would work for me. We'll figure it out in post. <laughs> We'll figure it out in post, but I, I wouldn't be opposed to being involved in that process or even maybe banging out a couple of solo ones if uh, you're not free or you're a little too tired. Yeah, man, because this, this, uh, this is our show, so if you ever wanted to do that, you're more than welcome to. Well, it's your baby. I'm just here to help. Oh, but look at that baby. Look at this baby who's got something on her face. I'm trying to... There we go. Oh, look at that puppy. All right. So let's get into some news, my good sir. Starting... All right. Starting off with Grand Blue Fantasy Relink PS4 and PS5 demos to debut this week. Psy Games latest showcase revealed a Grand Blue Fantasy Relink PS4 and PS5 demo, a Grand Blue Fantasy Versus Rising Save Data bonus, and an upcoming Lucilius battle. The trial will drop on the PlayStation Store on January 12th, so that, you know, four days ago. So by the time you hear this, this is out, and you can go check this out if you would like. The demo announcement included some details about what to expect at the one hour and four minute mark of the presentation. Psy Games offered apologies for it not being on Steam as well. It will offer three experiences. There will be a tutorial, an example for the story mode, and a brief quest mode experience with three quests from the game. The story is apparently nearly identical 
to the one in game. And as for quest mode, it can be played offline or online and includes 11 characters. As for the Grand Blue Fantasy versus Rising bonus, it's a lobby avatar. In the fighting game, someone will be able to select ID if they get Grand Blue Fantasy Relink. Uh, with Lucilius, that multiplayer boss fight debuts in March 2024. Uh, so, yeah, if you want to check that out, uh, go check that out now on PS4 and PS5, the demo. And it will come out on PS4, PS5, and PC via Steam. February 1st, 2024 will be the uh, the actual release date for the game. Man, these first three months are like big for JRPGs. Yeah, there's a lot of stuff that is on like, the horizon. Just in January and February, we've got some bangers coming out. And this next story is actually a nice surprise. And this is also... Coming out tomorrow as of this recording. So, Game Boy Advance Nintendo Switch Online adds Golden Sun and Golden Sun The Lost Age on January 17th. Game the, uh, Boy Advance... Go ahead, what were you going to say? The, uh, the article that I have about this up says January 16th. Oh, I'm on Gamatsu. Oh, I'm on RPG site. How did we end up huh. with two different things for this? <laughs> anyway, I, I don't continue. know. Continue. <laughs> I mean, I'll, I'll read the article I have, I guess, but it says January 17th. I don't have the Game Boy Advance uh, Switch Online pass because it's redundant for me. Like, just because I have the regular, like, $20 a year one where you get Nintendo and Super Nintendo and uh, regular Game Boy. But I don't have the Nintendo 64 and Game Boy Advance because basically every handheld I have can emulate Game Boy Advance like a champ. So I just oh, yeah. tend to play on that. But for those of you who do not emulate and have no idea what I'm talking about, <laughs> but have a Nintendo Switch, uh, Game Boy Advance Nintendo Switch Online will add Golden Sun and sequel Golden Sun The Lost Age on January 17th, Nintendo announced. So via Nintendo, here's an overview of each game. The first one, Golden Sun, from the humble village of Vale to the mystical peats of Mount Alf, the Golden Sun game sets magic-wielding young heroes Isaac... Garrett, Ivan, and Mia on a quest to prevent the ancient power of alchemy from being unleashed on their homeworld of Weyard. Their adventure takes them through towns, caverns, and dungeons as they face wily enemies uh oh, there we go, confounding puzzles and epic challenges that push their magical abilities synergy to their absolute limits. Along the way, they get help from mysterious creatures known as the Jinn, who aid the heroes in harnessing their synergy to unlock potent spells and unstoppable attacks. And Golden Sun The Lost Age is a direct sequel to Golden Sun, which presents a dramatic shift as how as the story now follows Felix, a young adept who has the antagonist of the first game, who was the antagonist of the first game, on his mission to prove that alchemy isn't a destructive force but one that could save Wayard after all. Forced to join Felix on his quest are adepts Jenna and Sheba and the wise and scholar Creighton, all of whom struggle to keep Felix on task as powerful and enigmatic new challenges face them all. Features cooperative gameplay that allows for friends to join your merry band, as well as turn-based combat, puzzle-solving, open-world exploration, and RPG-inspired character upgrades. Both of these games are layered with unpredictable gameplay built around in engrossing and engaging story the more you get to know where the more mysterious it gets uh so this is going to be available as part of the nintendo switch online plus expansion pack membership so if you pay the 50 dollars a year i believe it's 50 dollars a year uh for all of the extras that come with uh nintendo switch online including game boy advance you will be able to access uh these two games and I'm really glad that Nintendo kind of decided that these games are not going to go the way of the dinosaur. A little upsetting that they're not making new Golden Suns or they're not remastering. But I guess they don't particularly have to because if they're just sitting on these game files and they just have to throw them on an emulator and get them out. I mean, is there really anything pushing them to want to do a new version of Golden Sun? I mean, unless that this does, you know, banger reviews where people are like, oh, my God, I forgot how much I love this series. Yada, yada, yada. And I mean, then, on the go ahead. I'm sorry. Oh, no, I was going to say. And then, you know, then they might be like, oh, well, there's renewed interest in this series. 
then they might dive into something like that. I mean, also knowing Nintendo, this could be a teaser for a sequel that they're not talking about yet. So let's throw these old classics on Nintendo Switch Online, get people to remember these games, get new people to play them, and then sometime in 2024 we'll announce a, a Golden Sun 3 and call it a day. Yeah, see, that that wouldn't surprise me. That wouldn't surprise me either, but considering the last time they made a Golden Sun game was Game Boy Advance... I know a lot of people are looking forward to a new Golden Sun, just like they're looking forward to uh, Earthbound 3 coming out, which is never going to happen. You had to go there. I'm sorry. You had to go there. I'm sorry. I mean, that game has been translated to death, so I don't even know that that needs to happen anymore. You People could just go and find a fan translation. Yeah, and you know, I know you shouldn't be like, Oh, yeah, just go download stuff. But, like, for real, like, if there's a game that never came out over here but it has a fan translation, just go download that. Mother- go go just yeah. go download it and play it. <laughs> you almost forgot it was a family-friendly podcast, I did. didn't you? I did. You caught yourself. I did, and I'm proud of myself for catching myself. <laughs> <laughs> Good man. There was one time back in the day me and James were doing an episode, and I said something, yeah. and he ended up having to edit it in post. We Neither of us caught it. Whenever we were talking about it, it was when he was editing. He was like, oh, man, I, I caught you saying the F word. He goes, uh, and it it came out so, he's like, you said it just so casually and normally that I didn't even notice when we were recording. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> my bad. I w- You know what? The funny thing is, is if you didn't stop yourself, I probably wouldn't have thought of it either. I. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, you know. But. Uh, it's just the way we talk normally. I have a, uh, I have a friend of mine who. Uh, has me on their family plan. Oh, nice for the, uh, the Nintendo Switch Online. So this might be something I check out because this is like a series that I always wanted to check out. Yeah, but it was after my Game Boy Advance was long gone that I learned about Golden Sun because I just never saw it in any of the stores around here. Yeah, it was one that I was not interested in when it was out. I sold a ton of copies, never bought one myself. I might have played a Friends, like I might have popped a Friends in my Game Boy Advance and played it for like maybe five or ten minutes, but it wasn't until I started emulating that I really started to play that game, and yeah, it's it's definitely one that still holds up today. I mean, it's classic JRPG-style gameplay, can be a little grindy at times, but got a solid story. Yeah, I agree. It's a good one. Uh, There's a lot of people that want Isaac for Smash, which is never going to happen. I, uh, it would be cool though. It would be cool. I've just uh, I've watched some YouTube videos and stuff on the Golden Sun games, and I'm just like, man, they seem right up my alley. There, if you like Final Fantasy games, if you like classic Final Fantasy games, then anybody would like Golden Sun as well. It's yeah. and I you know. very similar. Actually, it might even be more Dragon Questy, but maybe it's just its own thing. Maybe it is its own thing. Speaking of its own thing, do you want to tackle this next story? Yeah, I'll run through this real quick. Um, So IGN has released a new video showcasing gameplay from Dragon's Dogma 2, this time focusing on the trickster vocation. This vocation, which is what classes are referred to as in the game, uh, vocations, uh, is new to the series and was previously revealed at the showcase held in late November 2023. The trickster in Dragon's Dogma 2 has a very different style of gameplay when compared to the other vocations. Its sensor attacks do negligible damage, but pull attention from enemies. They can buff the damage of their pawns and companions uh, who can lay into the befuddled foes. There are several other smoky shenanigans available to the trickster, including redeployable shadow clones and area of effect taunts and illusory walls or platforms. The IGN video also shows some ways of combining these tricks with astral projection abilities, tricking the enemies into jumping off ledges to their doom. That's awesome. That is awesome. (laughs) Uh, I I love these little roguelike classes that aren't just regular thief. They like throw their own spin on it. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. Because it's like you could just make a run of the mill old, you know, thief rogue character or you can get cool with it. That's what I enjoyed about uh, Kingdoms of Amalur, because I tried to make a thief-type character in that game, and I ended up just throwing Chakrams. Oh, God. Chakrams are the best weapon in that game for mid to... Really, anything but super long range. Yeah. 
That's another game I have to go back and finish. You're so good. I know. The only problem is I, uh, I have to start over. Why? I sold my Switch copy. I traded in my Switch copy to put toward Rebirth. Ah. So I still have the, my Steam version, which I play on Steam Deck, but that would just require me to start over. Which I'm okay with, because now that I know how the game works, I kind of wouldn't mind doing a fresh start of it. Because I'm not going in blind this time, I can kind of figure out my builds beforehand and just just go to town. That makes sense to me. Yeah. So. But yeah. Dragon's Dogma, Dragon's Dogma 2. Another game that I want, but don't know if I should buy it right away, because I might be getting involved in your, your backlog golf thing, and... <laughs> If I if I do that, then I gotta actually not buy games. Yeah, that's fair enough. If you want to learn more about that, bit.ly slash TSMP Discord, all capital letters. Actually, funny two thing too is I didn't e- I had no idea what your titles were until I started listening to uh, the Steamy Awards, and I'm like, oh, oh, that's we also why they're putting numbers. numbers at the end of their names. All right, I want in. As a matter of fact, after we're done recording, I gotta message Adam and be like, hey, I want in. Good, I might. Yeah, I was going to say, it's daytime where he is. Yeah, it's morning. He's at work right now, I bet. He's at work, so I he'll, he'll definitely respond to a DM. Yeah, for sure. All right, man, do you want to take the next one? Sure, uh, actually, no, because I'm terrible at pronouncing Atelier. Why don't you do that one, and I'll do the next two. All right, that's fine. <laughs> the PC version of Atelier Resler... And this is why I asked you to take that one. Yeah, Atelier Resleriana. Uh, Forgotten Alchemy and the Polar Knight Liberator is now available for PC via Steam in Japan. Publisher Koi Tecmo and developers Gust and Akatsuki Games have announced. Um, it is also coming to the West for PC, iOS, and Android in 2024. A uh, quick overview of the game. Long ago, the Kingdom of Lantarna proposed from the blessing of a white comet that passed overhead. Or prospered, excuse me, not proposed, prospered. Uh, the art of harnessing the comet's blessing was alchemy. And the practitioners of this art we know as alchemists. However, when the comet disappeared, its blessings were no longer available. The use of alchemy gradually declined and eventually were forgotten. Many years have passed. And in the corner of Lantarna, two girls have a fateful meeting. One is Resna, uh, who has found hope in alchemy and is on her way to the capital, aiming to travel the world to the world's end where the source of the miracle is said to lie. The other is Valeria. A girl who has lost her memories and now lives in the city while doing rough work as an adventurer for the Moonlight Society. Behind them looms the shadow of a group known as the Polar Knight Alchemists, a dark organization shrouded in mystery. With different motives and ambitions intertwined, the two eventually come closer to the truth that lies dormant on the continent. So yeah, if you are looking forward to that, uh, it is coming to the West in 2024. Hopefully it's not super premium. I don't know when in 2024, but... I don't know. Hopefully not too long. That's a series I really want to get into and check out is Atelier. Because I love crafting, and this is a crafting RPG. And it doesn't sound like you need to have played any of the older ones to get into this one. No, nah, like, it looks like they, they usually do them in threes. Okay, so this is like the first of a new trilogy. Yeah. Um, Although I think that this is going to be like a, a mobile game, so I'm hoping it's not freemium. Ooh, but not either. Um, yeah, the the other games, it's like there was Atelier, Ryza, 1, 2, and 3. Okay. And then you know, some other things like that. I, I believe that's the way it typically goes. Um, I mean, if it is a, a mobile game only, then it can't be that hard to get into, even if you got to pay for it. I would almost rather you have to pay for it. Yeah, because it's like, so I subscribe to... Uh, Google Play, whatever their like plus thing is, that's like five bucks a month. Yeah, and you can download a bunch of like premium games for free and play actual them. Actual games, yeah, dude. World of difference in like the um, there's no ads, there's no weird, you know, everything you click doesn't give you a thirty second ad to watch for it. To, it's 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 fantastic. Controller support, I guess, if you want it. Yep. Yeah, yeah so, it's that's neat. All right, that's I'll, neat. I'll let you. I have a. Uh, the Apple equivalent to that, but I barely use it. I just don't game on my phone. Oh, Apple Arcade? Yeah. It came with my cell phone service, so I just, I have it, but I don't use it. 
I've been toying with getting the Google one because I have Android handhelds that actually have a controller attached to them. So that seems like it would make the most sense <coughs> for me actually playing games. But anyway, yeah, like I've got two. The next, one. The next two. Yeah. You cover the next two. I'll cover the next one. Well, they're both Final Fantasy related. They both are MMO related. So they kind of tie together. So we'll start with uh, Final Fantasy fourteen. Dawn Trail Pictomancer John revealed at Tokyo Fan Fest. Patch 6.55 coming today. Uh, the Tokyo leg of Square Enix's Final Fantasy XIV Fan Fest event series just kicked off. And with it came a new reveal for Final Fantasy XIV Dawn Trail, the game's next expansion. Producer Naoki Yoshida went on stage at the Tokyo Fan Fest to introduce fans to the game's next playable job class, the Pictomancer. The other upcoming Dawn Trail job class, the Viper, was revealed at the London Fan Fest event. The Pictomancer is a ranged, magical DPS job that uses a palette and brush wand as their main hand weapon. As detailed in the teaser trailer, they use the brush and palette to effectively paint magical effects into existence, using flourishes of paint to bring pictures to life and even summon creatures like Moogles as part of their repertoire. The Pictomancer is inspired by Realm from Final Fantasy VI, who could call on similar abilities in combat. Though Realm's abilities were based on drawing monsters and using their abilities, the Final Fantasy XIV interpretation of the class also includes the ability to draw things like landscapes to expand their magical powers. As for their combat role, Pictomancers aren't quite a fully offensive-focused caster DPS class the way a Black Mage might be. Pictomancers have some party support options to call on, though they aren't a full support class. Players will be able to unlock the Pictomancer job at level 80, with their quest chain starting in the starter city of Gridania. So they're level locking this. Yes. So you have to at least get to Shadowbringers. That's interesting. They haven't done that since Heaven's Ward. Didn't Heaven's Ward have Red Mage and uh, Dark Knight start at 60? Or was it they started at 50? No, they started at 30. They started at 30. Okay. Yeah, they started at level 30. And maybe, like, as long as this is, like, you hit 80 and then you can go, you said you can go unlock it in Gridania? Yeah. Okay, so that's not as bad. Heaven's Ward, they were locked behind content. Oh, yeah, no. This one you can apparently just go ahead and unlock, but I'm more than sure you have to, A, have Dawn Trail, and, uh, B, you have to have a level 80. I know Reaper was locked behind level 70? Yeah, by the time that came out, I had a max level character, so I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and I didn't ever... I but don't I th- think I ever saw the Reaper quest chain show up until I beat Stormblood. Like, I think I was able to get Reaper. I could have gone through Shadowbringers as a Reaper, I know that. But I didn't do that. I went as a... I went through as a... What did I go through? I went through as a... Oh no, I don't remember. Did I go through as a Black Mage? I think I went through as a Black Mage. And I went through... Endwalker as Dragoon. I went through Heavensward and Endwalker as Dragoon because there's a certain character in both of those expansions that I just wanted to be like, he's my pal. He's my buddy. Oh, I know you're talking about Horse Font. No, well, I love Horse Font, but no. No, um, Astinian. Oh, okay. Astinian's he's cool, my, too. He's my boy. We go, we go Dragooning together. Anyway. Well, continue. This is a yeah. long one. I didn't realize how long this one was. Um, I'll try to shorten it up a little bit. Um, Square Enix also debuted a further extended version of Dawn Trail's opening movie. Uh, their new cut of the opening included a look at Cyan member Kryle, who will show up in Dawn Trail's story wielding Pictomancer powers. Characters like Aaronville and a new female Hrothgar were also shown. Yoshida said that players will meet the female Hrothgar in a main scenario update, which will launch with Patch 6.55, also known as Patch 6.5 Part 2, dated for January 16th, which is today. Quickly, it really seemed to bother people that Viera were female only and Hrothgar were male only. I guess I'm used to that because in Final Fantasy XI, Mithra were female only and Galka were male only, and that never bothered me. I guess it bothered people in 14 because they've come out with male Viera and now the female Horathgar. 
And I'm just like, man, as and, long as they and, make it make sense, lore was. And uh, they do, they do. Um, and quite frankly, they did a great job with the female Hrothgar to the point where I'm thinking of making a second character. <laughs> yeah, that's what you need. It's another character to play through the game on. I, I do. I, I ch- got to chase that dragon. So, Dawn Trail also. Uh, we, I just mentioned that. Yeah, I don't know. I thought I'm with you. I think it was fine that they did it the way they did it, but I don't know. It's okay that they also give the fans what they want and make other. Oh yeah, I, I don't actually care. Yeah, me neither. But I, I also don't get why people are so upset. I guess they just want to play the characters they want to play, and that's it. I suppose so. But the trailer yeah. looked cool from what I've seen of it. The trailer is really cool. Um, there's one air. It actually says that Taral is inspired by the Americas. And is divided into northern and southern sections with a great bridge connecting the two. Players will visit areas in both north and south Tyrol. And there's areas that were teased in another preview video. Um, and th- that's actually funny because they're also calling Tyrol the New World. Which is what they called North America in history. When an area that's stands cool. out, Solution 9 a futuristic looking city that will serve as a player hub. Um, Interesting. Dawn Trail will launch in summer 2024. Square Enix has not yet specified a launch date, uh, but the latest expansion, Endwalker, is still available on PC, PS4, and PS5, and they're actually working on an Xbox version. I bet August. I'm thinking August. I wish they would do uh, July, because it would give me more time in the summer. I work during the summer anyway, so it doesn't matter, but... Yeah, they would. I'm. I'm also thinking August because just because they say summer doesn't mean it's going to be like June. Yeah, yeah. Which, and which it sounds like cool, they but... still have a lot of work to do. Sorry, what were you gonna say? Oh no, I, was, I don't even remember. Oh, okay. <laughs> but now moving on to an MMO that you have a soft spot for. Yeah, baby. Final Fantasy XI director discusses server replacement, Windows 11 support. We are Vanadeel. Final Fantasy XI. Producer and director discussed the state of the game, including its server replacements, Windows 11 support, and the ongoing existence of the We Are Vanadeel site as a repository of information. 2024 New Year's Letter also went over plans in and out of the MMORPG for the next year. First, they brought up the Final Fantasy XI server replacement and Windows 11 support as part of efforts to ensure stability and compatibility. Uh, the director noted that in case of both, there is steady progress. There is no update on when either project will be finished. After that, he noted that We Are Vanadeel would not only remain online, but will get more updates about the development of Final Fantasy XI. Specifically, more interviews were confirmed, however, he also noted that it will offer oral histories for the game. As for the future of the game, uh, Fujito noted that there won't be as many updates in 2024, and the goal is long-term maintenance now. No shutdown was mentioned, with the director and producer stating, compared to the past when we release new content every year, there will not be as many updates to look forward to, but we will properly maintain the game and ensure you can continue to enjoy Final Fantasy XI for a long time to come. The Final Fantasy XIV Echoes of Vanadeel Final Fantasy XI Raid is also in development, and there will also be more supplemental elements, and he cited the February 17, 2024 dramatic reading as one such project. The update also noted there are some in-game New Year's events going on. Until January 15th, which was yesterday, an event is going on involving Dragatown... Dragatama in places like Batilla Downs, East and West Ronfaur, East and West Surabruda, East and Western Altipa Desert, North and South Gustaberg, and Kufum Island. There will also be Mughals at Bastok Mines, Northern Sandoria, and Windrust Water selling items. You can get the Ekome Spirit from Ake or Omi at Northern Sandoria, Port Bastok, and Port Windhurst as well. So, Final Fantasy XI is currently available on PCs. Bostock is your old uh, it's your desert city. Right. Right. Um, Windurst, Gridania. Okay. Sandoria is uh, kind of like Limsa, but it's not okay. as stacked. Sandoria is like a big elven castle type. Okay. Area. We. I, I got to get you to play eleven sometime. Got to get me out of fourteen. Wouldn't it be nice if they did it like WoW and WoW Classic? Where, if you where they just it, completely updated 
No, no, no. Like, so if you pay for World of Warcraft, you also you get, get access classic. to World of Warcraft Classic. So, so it's if like, you pay for fourteen, you should still get access to eleven. Even if they if they were like, it's like five bucks extra. Yeah. But you can do it through one payment instead of having to do it through two. Because, dude, one of the things that I would have to probably help you with is navigating, making a character that you is. You might have to edit there. Yeah, I know. Making a character that. Uh, <laughs> you Making an account so that I can actually subscribe. Oh, yeah, because you have to make an account, like your Square Enix account. Then you have to make yeah. a play online account, which is separate. Yeah. <coughs> <coughs> and you have to <coughs> keep track of both of those passwords <coughs> then you have to go into play online uh there's some other weird stuff that's going on through there i know i think i remember you could play tetra master through play online if you wanted huh. which is the card game from nine yeah uh but yeah then you can log in and make a character and even then it's still like i don't know there's a lot of steps to it that just are because this game came out in 2002 and they haven't really changed how to do it since then which means it's gonna play like a game from 2002 actually no they've they've made a lot of quality of life updates to the game itself not just not their like play online service got it but the play online music is one of my favorite tunes ever i'll have to send it to you so you can hear it yeah definitely i did have a play online account back in 2014 when i started playing a realm reborn like, I think they used Play Online back then, and then they kind of switched over to Mog Station. But I want to say I've had to use Play Online in the past. All right. No, that's not to say I remember my password. <laughs> that That's always the problem. Yeah. All right. All right, so. Chinese-style open-world action RPG, The Bustling World, announced for PlayStation, or excuse me, PC. My eyes are not working. I'm tired. Chinese yeah, developer no, Firewall Games has announced Chinese style open world action RPG, The Bustling World for PC. A release date was not announced, but a Kickstarter campaign seeking $80,000 in funding was also launched. The Bustling World is an open world RPG game set in ancient China. You can farm, breed, craft, build, fight, kill, establish a regime, run a country, conduct diplomacy, wage war, create a city, openness, freedom, and limitless are the game's biggest features. The bustling world does not follow a predetermined path of development. Everything in the world will think and decide its own, quote, behavior based on the player's action. The residents in the game will have their own lives, families, personalities, and social relationships. They will think and decide their own actions, work at home, go to work, go out for entertainment, relocate to other cities for money, avenge their families, escape from war, etc. These actions are determined by the NPC's personality, the family, and the player's actions. For example, if you offend some people with a bad temper, they may sabotage your shop. As a result, the cities in the game are also in dynamic change. NPC residents will decide where to live, what kind of house to build, and what type of shop to run. NPC's regime will also consider their relationship with each city whether to establish diplomacy, trade, or wage war, etc. When you return to a city that you left many years ago, it may become unfamiliar. World and Resident AI will give you unique responses to every action and decision, making every new game experience unique for the player. Uh, our ga the game has more than 60 kinds of plants. Different plants will uh, have different requirements for soil, moisture, and temperature. You'll need to handle different skills and tools to make your plants grow strong. Uh, there are more than 30 kinds of 30 kinds of animals, which can produce various materials for you. They can also help you fight or ride. In the process of breeding and training, animals have a chance to mutate and upgrade to a higher level species. That's interesting. Yeah. You can also try and is catch... Is it really higher. called animal husbandry? Yeah. That's what br animal breeding is called, animal husbandry. Is that really what it's called? Yeah. I'm going to start using that term. <laughs> I, I need to get a shiny Pokemon, so I have to do some Pokemon husbandry. There you go. You gotta do some Pokemon husbandry. You gotta do some Pokemon husbandry. Is there is there Nexomon husbandry? No. Not that I know of. That's probably for the best. That <laughs> game is tweaked enough as it is. Uh, our game realistically restores the ancient Chinese variety of handicrafts, such as cooking, weaving, smelting, etc. Players can replace manual production with hired workers or achieve large-scale production through a combination of production lines and transportation. And there is just so much more that is deep 
into this game and there's some screenshots of it that just look really cool i really dig the art style of it i was gonna say this is a long article you got clothing customization town management uh leisure activities social activities architecture architecture production theft establishing a regime this this is a lot of game for a kickstarter campaign that this is very ambitious oh yeah absolutely um so it just it looked so cool to me uh is there any uh is there anything else about it that you want to get into in detail because i know it's kind of a long article uh no i just think it's really interesting that it's kind of like an open an open-ended game yeah reminds me kind of of like uh like mountain blade or i was gonna say i knew that was coming up i knew mountain blade was coming up yeah yeah that or kinshi dude like it's just like they just it's a sandbox rpg yeah but you know what sandbox rpgs are a blast Anytime I have an opportunity to not progress the main story, I'll I'll take that. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. A- absolutely. So, next uh our next story is on uh Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. And some good news is that it's going to be Steam Deck compatible. Yeah. RGG Studio has announced that Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth will be available on the Steam Deck. You'll be able to play it even when you're not home. The Steam Deck is essentially a handheld gaming computer that you can use in a similar way as a Nintendo Switch. However, not all games are compatible with it. Examples of games that work equally well on a Steam Deck as they do on a PC include Baldur's Gate 3, that's a lie, it only runs at like 25 frames per second, (laughs) Stardew Valley, and Valheim. Soon Steam will be able to add Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth to that list of Steam Deck compatible titles. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth will be the 8th and newest mainline installment of the long-running Like a Dragon Yakuza series. It will feature new protagonist Katsuga Ichiban in his misadventures in Hawaii. Not only will his friends from Like a Dragon return, but Kiryu will be a fully playable character as well, since the game will also come out on consoles, as the series originated as a console only. It will likely not be difficult to players to adjust to handling it on a Steam Deck. Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth will be playable for PS4, PS5, Xbox Series X, Xbox One, Windows PC via Steam, and Steam Deck on January 26, 2024. Um, they're back in Hawaii. Didn't, uh, doesn't Kiryu have, uh, an orphanage or something in Hawaii? No. The, or am uh, I thinking something different? I believe that the, the orphanage was in Okinawa. Okay. <clears throat> My mistake. I remember you talked about him wearing, like, Hawaiian shirts or like casual yeah. gear or oh he was definitely wearing a hawaiian shirt yeah yeah but sure. you also mentioned the three was just not great <laughs> it was all right at best yeah not the uh the finest yakuza game that we've played so far yeah i almost i feel like when i finally get back into yakuza i might skip three four and five and just like watch either a long play or a retrospective or something i love a good retrospective yeah i really do especially like Oh, man. People always, like, scoff at the length of the videos that I post, but I love a long retro. Give me a deep dive. Yeah. Make it like I played the game, even though I didn't play the game. Yeah. I want that knowledge. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I watched a, uh, after we did, and this isn't JRPG related, so I apologize, but after we did Resident Evil 2 uh, remake for Steam Machine, and I, I loved that game so much that I beat both leon and claire's and then i went back and beat leon's second one and then i beat the entirety of resident evil 3 remake in the time it took so in that two weeks i beat two games because i liked it so much and then i went and watched a retrospective on the entire resident evil series it was like a six and a half hour video i didn't watch it obviously not all at once yeah i didn't watch it all in one sitting no but like i would you know watch some of it pause it go do other things come back unpause it watch it for another hour watch something wrestling related i'm sure for a while then yeah. go back and watch more of that like yeah so it's like i chip away at it and that's what like when i send somebody a video that's like six hours i'm not like hey dedicate the next six hours of your life to this it's like not like watch this in increments but it's worth yeah. checking out uh, yeah exactly and, and youtube saves your spot so yeah yeah you can always go back to it youtube has come such a long way really has like man do i remember back in the if you go on my youtube channel uh if you just go search dalton Suter on youtube uh, and scroll way back to when I was recording myself on like a little digital camera 
and then yeah. uploading it in 360 and 180p and it's it's square it's not widescreen it's just straight square oh man we get to see baby dalton oh dude i'm like let's see 2011 oh man 2010 like i got on there relatively early um i should have stuck with it but yeah i was uh 16 somewhere around there i had i had a a little afro because my hair was my hair's really curly but it was short and i had it dyed i had it dyed black and i was like 430 pounds oh man but i look ridiculous bro but i I... go ahead i was gonna say uh my still to this day my most viewed video uh unless the one of the vocal covers i did recently from the queen of a damn soundtrack that just took off for some reason has beaten it already but uh I did what it's like acoustically. Okay. Back then, and it, um, I think last time I checked, it was like thirteen, fourteen thousand views. Oh wow! And it got most of those back in the day. Now here's the kicker: I went one night and I was going through and looking at, and this was again years ago. I've never been able to find this again. But I was going through other people's videos of what it's like because I don't know if you remember where you could do reactions back in the day. Or mm-hmm. like you could record the video and people it would show up in a little thing below. Mm-hmm. So pe- so people would do that to my cover because it was getting traction, quote unquote traction. Back then it yeah. was doing decently for the time. And uh, I remember going through the comments on one of them and it said on somebody else's cover. This is pretty good. But the best cover that exists of this on YouTube is by Dalton Suter 666, which was my oh, wow. YouTube thing at the time. And I was yeah. like, that felt real good. <laughs> to just see that random comment on someone else's video i don't know any of these people yeah and it was like hey they're talking about me that's cool yeah look at that but also at the same time i feel bad for that guy because it yeah, doesn't feel good true. to get comments like that so you know i, I went through something like that recently <coughs> where uh uh one of the other handheld youtubers did a did a first look of a handheld that i don't even have yet and Apparently there are a couple people that that really didn't like what he had to say, and I know th- I know the guy. He's a he's a good dude, but they uh they like bashed his video, and then they're like said something along the lines of like I'm gonna wait for Team Retro and see what he has to say, and I'm like okay, that's <laughs> yeah, it makes you feel good, doesn't it? It it that's nice of you to say, but don't bash this guy. He's all right. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a weird it's a weird yeah. double feeling that you get. Yeah. So. All right. Anyway, so, speak, speaking of weird double feelings, uh, I, I I don't know. I was trying to transition. Oh, okay. <laughs> I I failed. Um, Bandai Namco revealed that the Sandland game will release on consoles on April twenty sixth, twenty twenty four. Alongside the reveal of the release date, Bandai Namco also released a brand new trailer for the Sandland game, showing off the vehicles that can be used while playing. The Sandland game is based on the original manga created by Akira Toriyama and ran in Weekly Shonen Jump. The game will focus on the storyline of the manga, but features a brand. The game will focus on the storyline of the manga, but features a brand new story, elements, and characters. Oh, okay. That didn't make sense to me the first time my eyes read it. No, over. It, they wrote it funny. <laughs> oh, this is Silicon Era. That's why it's yeah. written funny. Uh, Silicon Era, you let us down again. Okay. The trailer shows off a new character named Anne who joins Beelzebub on his journey in search of the legendary spring and works as a mechanic. The Sandland game release date trailer shows off the different vehicles that can be used to travel and fight enemies in the desert. Some of the vehicles include a hover car, a hover tank, off-road vehicles, and giant robots. The hover car can be used to travel across the wetlands and rough terrain. Hover tanks can be used to battle against enemies and can be equipped with long weight Long ranged, long, long range. ranged weapons. Vehicles can be customized with different parts and weapons, which are obtained while exploring dungeons and finding treasure chests. Visual customizations can be made on vehicles using skin and decals. Oh, Sandland Underground Two skins and decals can be purchased from the paint shop in game. I like how you know sold that joke. The brand new trailer announcing the release date for the game can be viewed below. I missed something. No, I said Sandland Underground 2 because it was car customization. So like Need for Speed Underground. Oh, 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 yes. Okay. The synapses connected. I I, I see what you you did there now. It's a Need for Speed reference. Yeah. (laughs) 
<laughs> I understood that reference. <laughs> it did, took me a second. I thought you were pulling Next. a Willie where Willie just sits there quietly and shakes his head at me when I make a dad joke on the steam machine. <laughs> no, I legit didn't get it until you said it a second time. And I'm like, oh, yeah, OK. Oh, anyway, speaking of fresh coats of paint, this is a good transition. Yeah. Persona 3 Reload new trailer showcases locations. Atlas shared a new Persona 3 Reload trailer that focuses on some of the locations and activities that players can explore on Tsumi Port Island. Players can buy useful items and equipment, work part-time, spend time with social link characters, or hang out to improve their social skills at various locations. Polonia Mall is home to Karaoke Mandragora and a game center where players can go to raise social stats. The mall also houses the club Escapade. The trailer shows the main character talking to a fortune teller new to Persona 3 Reload. There seem to be three different types of fortunes that players can request to have read, and one of them has the effect of increasing the chance of encountering rare enemies when exploring Tartarus. Nice. The pharmacy, because I can't pronounce that name. (laughs) Yeah, I can't help you on that one. Yeah, we're just going to say the pharmacy. And police station allow players to purchase recovery items and equipment, respectively. Uh, There's an antique store that was renamed to Mayoto Antiques. And players can transform personas into powerful equipment and exchange materials found on Tartarus for useful items or skill cards. B Blue V allows players to reorganize party members' persona skills. In Persona 3 and P3 FES, B Blue V was an accessory store and a healing store that improved character conditions from tired to great in P3P. The trailer also features the Iwatoadi Station Food Court, where players can participate in eating challenges at Wild Duck Burger or enjoy ramen at the Hakagura Restaurant. Players can also hang out with social link characters at various Palomia Mall and Iwatode Food Court locations to progress in their stories. You could check out the new Persona 3 Reload trailer focused on different locations in the game here, and there's a YouTube video. Uh, Persona 3 Reload will come out on PS4, PS5, Xbox One, Series X, and PC on February 2nd, 2024. Day one purchase for me. Although it probably shouldn't be, it's going to be anyways. Yeah, I'll probably get it relatively soon as after it comes out as well. Um, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> Just real quick for the listeners. What did I do? It's Hagakure. Sorry. Right? Paulonia. Sorry. Um, and there was one other one. Hold on. The food court. Iwatodai. Uh, it, I think it was Iwatodai. Uh Station. No, 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 it's fine. It just made me giggle because you at least attempted it, but you got every one of them wrong and it just cracked me. <laughs> <laughs> and the one up there, I think, is Ahohege. Okay. But that is just a pure guess on my part. It, it wasn't just the names that threw me off. I also thought I was reading a story about a Yakuza game. Yeah. It's kind of similar, yeah, when they start throwing kar- out. Karaoke, the club, like. Getting some ramen. Getting some ramen. Speaking of which, I'm not that much into Zero, but how the heck do you play karaoke? Do I, I've only done karaoke the one time that's part of the story, and I was so bad at it. I think I was so bad that the other guy I was with, whose name I forget now because it's been a while since I played, told me how bad I was. It's a rhythm game, man. I have no rhythm then. Can you feel the rhythm? Which is weird because I was a drummer when i was younger so i should have some sense of rhythm (laughs) i just play it more you'll get better at it that's all yeah the the baseball uh batting cages are also very difficult yeah i'm i'm terrible at baseball and like so i'm guessing it's optional anyways but uh all right Atlas and Vanillaware's latest Unicorn Overlord gameplay trailer focuses on going over how liberating regions by exploring them will work. It's framed as an information lecture by former Kingdom of Konya Holy Knight Yosef of former Konyan Prince Alain. The main focus of the overworld exploration with the Liberation Army. Uh, during the game, players will go to different areas in Fevrith, dealing with enemies, improving their army, and preparing to face the Empire of Zenoria. Uh, quests involve 
helping people in the area to gradually liberate it and take part in battle stages for rewards. There will also be settlements that can be freed by taking part in battles. When you do this, you can then gain the help of those people and visit their stores. It is also possible to invest in the towns and forts to improve them. So if you like check out this trailer, it is on Atlas's um, American YouTube channel. And I, think, I believe I did retweet this as well. But it's the uh, Unicorn Overload Yosef's Guide to Exploration video for the Nintendo Switch. Uh, we've seen lots of Unicorn Overlord screenshots ahead of the game's debut as well. Some of them showed off the different allies we'll encounter, as well as story segments and fights with them. Others went over the relationship building elements as players will build up a rapport with members of their army and see how working together will improve people's performances. Unicorn Overlord, which is a great name. That is a great name. I love that name, Unicorn Overlord. Uh, for some reason, it reminds me of Tactics Ogre, and I don't know why. <laughs> but uh, Unicorn, it's two words that you would never expect to go together and they go together. Yeah, that's probably exactly what it is, to be honest with you. <laughs> Unicorn Overlord will come to the Nintendo Switch, PlayStation 4, PlayStation 5, and Xbox Series X March 8th, 2024. That's another JRPG that, like, if you're into JRPGs, that game is on your list. Yeah. Yeah, the art style is super cool. The art style is super cool. We talked about that last uh, episode. I think we said it was kind of Final Fantasy Tactics, like kind of not. Yeah. All right, so, I'm going to help you out. Toho. Thank you. You're welcome. Toho Project Adventure RPG Marissa of Liar Top Mountain announced for PC. Publisher Alliance Arts and developer Unknown X have announced Toho Project officially approved derivative adventure RPG Marissa of Liar Top. Okay, hold on. Let me reread this. <laughs> that, that, was a, that was a mouthful. I, I give you Pu- that. Publisher Alliance Arts and developer Unknown X have announced. Toho Project officially approved derivative adventure RPG Marissa of Liar Top Mountain for PC. It will launch in 2024. So mm-hmm. Alliance Arts, Unknown X, they announced that Toho Project approved the RPG. What? Yeah, I was about to say officially approved derivative adventure RPG. Yeah, so the Toho Project, which is like the guy who made the original Toho stuff, basically was like, my characters are open. You guys could the whole universe. You guys can just add to it. It's kind of like an, a living, breathing SCP. Okay. Um, and so people have, so there are all kinds of Toho games. There's shoot 'em ups. There's RPGs. I have an Isekai cafe simulator game. That's a Toho game. Okay. It's just like a bunch of, uh, you have a, a cafe. Si- is it on phone or is it on PC? No, it's on steam. Send that you. to me after we're done. I, I, you've piqued my interest, sir. Yeah, for sure. It's called uh, Toho Mistia's Izakaya. I'll send it okay. to you, though. But for the listeners, that's the name of the game that I have. Uh, okay. But go, go on. What were you saying? That, that there's a whole there's a whole bunch of games that fall under this Toho project. There's a lot of games. Yeah. Um, wow. Varying qualities, too. But, like, usually they, they're pretty good about only approving the ones that are, like, good. So, so, they, so they could make the game. They have to submit it to Toho Project, and then they have to say, yes, this is going to be part of our canon. I believe I believe so for them to officially, yeah. That's pretty cool. All right, so continue. Right. I'm sorry. No, that's fine. That's good information for our viewers, because some might not know what a Toho game is. That's fair. It's a weird word. I only know how to say it because Willie corrected me, because I used to say Toho. I was probably going to say to- Toho. To- See, now I forgot the actual pronunciation because my to brain who? is shot. To, to who? To who? To who? To you? To me? Couldn't be. <laughs> then who? To you. Who, anyway. Who's on first? <laughs> Love that skit. <laughs> uh, so, Marissa of Liar Top Mountain is an action-adventure RPG where you, the player, will play as Rainbow and explore a mountain of books filled with mysteries and lies in search of the whereabouts of the missing Marissa. Advance or retreat, there lies a mountain of falsehood. In the depths of Marissa's lies, the conclusion to the story will be decided by you. Welcome to a mystic world of adventure sewn together by a singular magical book. Marissa of Liartop Mountain is an adventure role-playing game that progresses according to the player's decision-making in addition to the guidance of dice. You, the player, will play as Rimu and explore a mountain of books filled with mysteries and lies in search of the whereabouts of Marissa. 
Uh, your choices change the whole story. Inspired by the famous game book, this game is filled with unimaginable freedom of choice. Each decision spins a one-in-a-lifetime adventure. I guess the, the famous game book is like a choose-your-own-adventure story. If you remember those from, from back in the 80s where uh, you basically started reading and then it was like, if you want to do this, turn to this page. If you want to do this, turn to this page. I still have a couple of those around here somewhere. I don't have mine anymore. I think they might actually still be at my parents' house. But I don't ever remember being able to get through to an actual ending that wasn't me dying. As a matter of fact, <laughs> every single ending that I got to, I pretty much remember them describing like the last seconds of your life and like the last things that you see. And <laughs> it's actually very disturbing now that I think about it, reading those as a child. Uh, so I think that's pretty much it for the story. Um, you... It's a combination of, you know, Dungeons and Dragons dice roll checks with a choose your own adventure book of the 80s. Sounds like a good time. We'll launch in 2024 at some point. Yeah. Do me a favor. Take the next one for me, too, my good sir. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, physical release for Wany Wanyan Sword Mist Beyond the Mountains releases later this year. Developer Softstar Entertainment and publisher Serenity Forge have revealed that Wanwan Sword Mist Beyond the Mountains will be receiving a physical retail release for Nintendo Switch targeting Q4 of this year. The release will come as either a $39.99 standard release bundled with a clipboard stand E of the main characters Septum and Nicole, as well as an art card containing a download code for the digital soundtrack, or an $79.99 collector's edition with everything above, in addition to a wall scroll, a resin tea pet statue, a physical soundtrack CD, and a collector's box. Uh, this released for Nintendo Switch and PC last year. Nintendo Switch players who have been waiting for a physical release before picking it up will finally have the chance to do so when the game comes available through Serenity Forge's online store and Video Games Plus later this year um i don't know if you heard me butcher the name you may need to correct me on that you on sword that's what it is you on sword i, I, I said one i said one one sword and i said it twice i think it's one you on one you on sword miss beyond the mountains okay For, please forgive my my uh pronunciation error then i did say it twice and oh, then I, like I eventually like i'd like you. what's that i just like picking on you dude i don't care no, please, pick on me away. It makes for good listening. <laughs> Michaela mispronounced this again. That scallywag. So it did get to a point where I uh, just stopped saying the title of the game. <laughs> so um, are you good or do you want me to take the next one? Oh, no, no, no. We're good. We're good. Okay. Okay. I just heard the puppy whining. I was making sure she was okay. Uh, um, is she good? Yeah, she's okay. okay. I think she's just... Cool ready for me to come snuggle with her oh um, snuggle puppies so a demo is now available for koi tecmo and omega forces fate samurai remnant wait did we already talk about no we no, didn't okay, that was grand blue fantasy never mind i'm getting games confused uh allowing interested players to get a taste of the game before buying the demo is available on pc PC, uh, pc ps4 ps5 and switch and offers the option to carry over save data to the full game Fate Samurai Remnant is a story-heavy RPG with Musou series-style combat set in uh, Type Moon's Fate universe. In it, magic users summon the spirits of historical and mythological figures to fight for the wishes from the Holy Grail. This time, the action is set in the 1600s Edo and follows Miyamoto Iori, uh, the disciple of the legendary swordmaster Miyamoto Musashi, as he becomes entangled in the waxing moon ritual. Covering the game's introductory section, the demo will include the initial conflict between Aori and the mysterious enemy rider class servant, his summoning of his own saber class servant, and some of the exploration of the game's initial area of Ido. Save data from playing the demo then can be carried over to the full game if the player wishes to continue. Koi Tecmo also released a trailer for the upcoming first DLC pack for Fate Samurai Remnant titled Record Fragments Kian Command Championship. 
the playable saber from the game also recently appeared in Fate Grind Order as a summonable servant. Both the demo and full version of Fate Samurai Remnant are now available for PC, PS4, PS5, and Nintendo Switch. It looks cool. I love uh, Musou style combat as Dynasty Warriors all day. Yeah. Named after the it. person who created that style of video game, right? I believe so. Like, whenever somebody says, oh, that's a Musou game, like, Musou is a human. Oh, okay. I, I actually didn't know that. I believe Musou is a human. I think it's the person who... I don't know if it's the person who came up with Dynasty Warriors or the person who came up with the Dynasty Warriors style of uh, one versus 100 or whatever it is. Yeah, it, oh, I love it. Throw all those enemies at me. It's awesome. Yeah, and you come out, you come out on the other end and they're all just... And, uh, and because I know you're hyped for it, I'm going to let you take this last one. Oh, yeah. Super hyped. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth shares Destined for Rebirth trailer. Details on Elena, Captain Titov, Yuffie, and Kate Sith, uh, again, mispronunciations. We always called it Kate Sith back in the days of the PS1. Yeah, I uh, I think it's Kaichi, but I, I just call it Kate Sith as well. We'll find out when this game comes out because it will definitely be pronounced at one point, And my world will probably explode at that moment. What do you mean his name is Barit? What? <laughs> I'd be like, what, is, what do you mean his name is Barit? <laughs> I didn't realize it was pronounced that way. <laughs> Wait, you you mean you mean it's not pronounced Ufai? Ufai? You, you mean to tell me that's not Cluud? <laughs> Come now. Uh, Taifei? Vincent? Vincent? Uh, Blue 13? Man, my Reaper in uh, 14 looks like Vincent right now. Like Vincent with cat ears, and I, I just really like it. Nice. I didn't even plan for it to happen. I just went into a random dungeon and one of the other players was like, dude, you look like Vincent. It's really cool. And I'm like, you know what? Thank you. <laughs> I appreciate that. I'm going to go with it. So Square Enix has released a new Destined for Rebirth trailer and information for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth showcasing. Wait, it's pronounced Sephirothe? <laughs> <laughs> Sephiroth. And detailing <laughs> start. <sighs> That's a song that you should cover. I dare you to cover that. How many times I'd have to layer my voice for that? Take the challenge, Dalton. You know you want to. Hey, I can't hear that without thinking of uh, Outside Xbox. They did a thing one time, and Luke from Outside Extra was just like, Sephiroth, Sephiroth, he flies around, he flies around the town, Sephiroth. <laughs> Great, now that's going to be stuck in my head, just like how you ruined the Stormblood theme for me. <laughs> stormy, stormy, blood, blood. <laughs> Uh, yeah, stormy, stormy blood. Stormy, every stormy time, blood. every time I go through a, a Stormblood dungeon, I just start singing it, and, I, and I'm like, "Damn it, Dalton!" <laughs> Still kind of funny. Anyway, so let me start over. Square Enix has released a new Destined for Rebirth trailer and information for Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, showcasing Sephiroth and detailing Starboard Junion, the Shinra Eight cruise ship, Alina, Captain Titov, and Yuffie and Kate Sith battle abilities. Uh, the details can be found uh, below in the press release, which I'm just going to skip to. Square Enix today released a new trailer for its eagerly awaited RPG and the most anticipated game of 2024 as crowned by the Game Awards, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. The new trailer, entitled Destined for Rebirth, sets up the conflict between Cloud and his companions, including Tifa, Aerith, and Barret, and arch-nemesis Sephiroth. The video debuts alongside several new screenshots and renders for in-game characters and locales. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is launching globally on February 29th exclusively for the PlayStation 5 console. In addition to providing new details about the planet-spanning threat posed by Sephiroth, Destined for Rebirth showcases epic moments including the fight against the Terror of the Deep Boss, the Junior Ceremony, and the Nibelheim Incident. The first glimpses at newly imagined creatures and characters like Midgar Sormer. Which, Ooh. I don't care what the game is, if you mention the dragon Midgard Sormer, I'm in. Like that, He's just my favorite dragon. Yeah, he was awesome in uh, 14. He was awesome in 14, and even before that, there was a mobile game I played called Dragalia Lost, which was published by Nintendo. And Nintendo and their infinite wisdom shut it down. And man, that was the only game I played on my phone. Why did they kill it? Because it was a phenomenal game. And the first <clears throat> dragon you get is Midgard Sormer. 
As a matter of fact, like I had just unlocked um, a humanoid version of them because apparently in this in that game, it got to a point where the dragons assumed human form so they could blend in with their surroundings and they could socialize with the the other characters. And it was just an awesome looking render of like the the dragon in human form, and it was great. And they shut the game down. It was doing so well. It had a Mega Man crossover. It had a Fire Emblem crossover. It had a Persona 5 crossover. I had Joker in that game. Yeah, Nintendo I, I remember e- downloading it because of the Persona 5 crossover. Man, you know, it, had, I- uh, it, it also had, um, they also did a Monster Hunter crossover. So they took one of the regular characters and put him in a uh, Rathalos armor. Oh, so I had cool. that. I had that too. They, uh, Nintendo just. I don't know what they have against mobile. They were they were like all in on mobile, and then they stopped. Sorry, I went on a tangent. No, you're fine, dude. I, I had two phone games that I used to absolutely adore that you can't play either of them anymore because the servers are gone. Um, yeah. But they were the same developer back in the day. One was called Hellfire the Summoning. Yeah. Which was like, you, it was like a monster collector game, but your elements would go into this ball that you had then had to, like Pokemon Go... Like throwing the Pokeball. Yeah. It was a lot like that, but you were throwing at the screen where like these cards of enemies were in different spots on the screen and you had to try to hit them with these balls. Okay. It was awesome. And it was a really, really cool, fun RPG. And then they had another game called Blood Brothers, which was just like a mobile tactical or turn based RPG type game. And it was fantastic. Both games were phenomenal, but the studio shut down. So and this is why I don't play games on my phone anymore because well think about all the the mobile games that have come out and then like a year later they're like all right we're wrapping it up. Yeah. And Dragalia Lost did not need to get taken down. It had the full backing and support of Nintendo. Like Now they could have financially supported that game forever. I respect Kingdom Hearts Unity X or whatever it was called, Unity Key. Yeah. Uh the they shut down the online servers, but they left that game up where you can play it single player because there is key lore in that game. Yeah. Well, and uh, no pun Capcom, intended. too, they had a mobile game called Mega Man X Dive, and they shut down the servers for that, but they released Mega Man X Dive offline, and it's the full game, and you can play it, but you don't need to connect to a server. Yeah. Yeah. I respect so- people who do that. Like all, all honestly, like all Nintendo has to do had to do was either like make the game offline, even if we had to start over, or release a version for the Switch. But no, no, they were dumb. That game is is lost. Like there's no, there's no recovering that. You could say it's Dragalia lost. Yeah, buddy, there it is. There's the head shake. You walked right into that though. I I did. <laughs> Maybe they knew they were going to shut it down after two years, and that's what they chose their name. Yeah, Dragalia means two years in another language. Yeah, right. Language. All right. I, I apologize. I I went on a tangent. We were talking about Final Fantasy VII, and we just completely went off the rails just because of that, the, the dragon Midgard Sormer. Anyway. New assets and their corresponding descriptions give fans and newcomers a closer look at Junyun and the Shinra H ship that ferries the party between Junyun and the beachside town of Costa del Sol. I can't wait for Costa del Sol. New character renders showcase the wisecracking feline shaped robot, Kate Sith, its big Moogle steed, Shinra H, Captain Titov, and fan favorite character, Alina. Kate Kate Sith and Yuffie's combat styles, including their synergy ability, Moogle Pinwheel, are also explored. Voted most anticipated game of 2024, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth is the new story in the critically critically acclaimed, I love how Square Enix loves saying critically acclaimed, Final Fantasy VII Remake Project. The standalone adventure sets across a vast and vibrant planet, sees Cloud, Tifa, Barrett, Aerith, and Red 13 escape from the dystopian city of Midgar into the wide world beyond. To hunt down Sephiroth, a haunting figure from Cloud's past bent on ruling the planet, these unlikely heroes join forces with new companions like the spirited ninja operative Yuffie and the wisecracking feline-shaped robot Kate Sith. Lead these characters into battle to overcome their fates, explore classic locales, reimagine in dazzling detail, encounter dozens of hours of rewarding side quests, fiend hunts, minigames, and rich stories of the planet's people and cultures. Final Fantasy VII Rebirth follows the first game in the trilogy, uh... 
Final Fantasy VII, I think that's supposed to be Remake, released in 2020 to universal acclaim from players and critics around the globe. After earning more than 20 perfect scores from media and being selected as a PlayStation Editor's Choice pick, Final Fantasy VII Remake became the highest-selling digital release on the PlayStation platform in Square Enix's history, exceeding more than 7 million shipments and digital sales worldwide since its release. Woo! So, I need to go back. So, I'm debating. And this might be a good point of conversation here. It is mid-January. I told myself I was going to play Crisis Core. I was going to play Remake again. Because I, I want to play it on PS5 with the DLC. And then I was going to have Rebirth come out. Do I continue with that plan? Or do I just start playing Remake again before the 29th? And do I wait until after I beat Rebirth to play Crisis Core? So my question to you is... Uh huh. Are you wanting to play Remake for a refresher on what happened? I want to play Remake because I want to play it on PS5 with the updated graphics and all that. And yes, I do want a refresher, um, but I also want to play through the DLC, which wasn't available on the PS4 version when I played it. Okay, that makes more sense. Okay, then never mind. My my idea is out. What was your idea? Play the original. I already pl- I played the original before I played the remake. That was a mistake. Was it? Yeah, because I actually put the remake down for six months because I was like, this game sucks. It's nothing like the original. Ah, okay. And then I went back... And I played it with a fresh set of eyes after not playing Final Fantasy VII, the original. And I actually really enjoyed it. Word up. Yeah. It was uh, weird how that happened. Like, I thought it would be cool to play the original and then play the remake and see I, what was what was changed and, and what was... It, 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 it kicked me in the butt. I can relate to that. I uh, While we were doing Final, the original Final Fantasy VII for the show... I yeah. had downloaded and checked out Remake and played some of it, and I, I didn't vibe with it. Yeah, you can't. No, you have to give time between the two. I don't know why. You just do. But Final Fantasy VII is such a timeless game. It almost feels like that movie coming out and messing up your book. Yeah. But man, if you and- take it on its own as a, as a retelling or as a, you know, the same story but a different director or whatever... However, you want to like anticipate it or or translate it, it on on its own, it's a very good game. I think once this trilogy is complete, yeah. they've got the whole remade Final Fantasy VII. Maybe, maybe it'll be up there with Final Fantasy VIII. No, eight needs a remake. I I agree, and make it like as many parts as you need. I will buy every one for seventy dollars. That's that was originally why I was hesitant on this Final Fantasy VII remake because I'm like they're they're gonna make this a whole bunch of different discs and they're just gonna gouge every cent out of the fans as they could but they're doing it justice yeah it, and and I I kind of like where Rebirth is gonna go because I I almost feel like it's a calm before the storm like it's still it's still gonna be disc one like you end Rebirth in the the lost city where where Aerith dies. Spoilers. But the, but they're starting to throw all these questions as to whether she's really going to die. So, and th- they're basically getting the fans of the original still invested. Here's my guess, right? Uh-huh. My guess is that they somehow make it to where she doesn't die. And then, though, and spoilers, if you haven't played Remake, skip ahead, but I've heard podcasts about it. Um, those little things that are trying to keep the timeline in in order yeah i feel like one of them is gonna show up and like snap her neck or something and that kill her, and would, kill her they're gonna find a way to destroy our hearts again yeah they destroyed our hearts back in the late 90s they're gonna do it again watch them kill like tifa or like red 13 or something instead that they're definitely going to do something different. It's going to hit us different, but it's still going to hit us like a truck. Oh, what if Sephiroth takes his massive sword and commits Harakuri? That's not going to happen. And just all, of a, and then all of a sudden it's like, what? Where are they going to go from here? Oh, you better buy game three to see. Yeah, but I don't know that the, 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 the monsters won't allow that to happen. Sephiroth killed himself. There, there's a character who died in Remake who wasn't supposed to die, 
And so they like tugged our heartstrings because they're like, wait a minute, what? What? No, no. And then they they retconned it because the 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 Reaper things were just like, oh no no no, we're, you're not supposed to be dead yet. Get get up, you jerk. And he was like, damn, thank you. <laughs> Basically, but then you know, yeah, that that. Cloud, I hear you look I, pretty good in the dress. <laughs> I I'm sorry. In my head, Mister or Barrett has always talked like Mister T. He, they made him talk like Mr. T in the remake. Did they? Thank goodness. Yeah. Like he, yeah, no, they did. He, he sounds like Mr. T. You, you're not, <laughs> you're not gonna be disappointed there. Beautiful. Pity the fool who, who doesn't get on this train. What are you doing, Cloud? Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! Exclamation mark! What are we paying you for? At symbol, dude. Didn't you also like, like in the original Final Fantasy VII, how they, they basically cursed, but they just put asterisks like after like. The first two letters and they got away with it they would do that or they just hit you with a bunch of like symbols symbols yeah or it's just like a hashtag exclamation point at, yeah. at symbol at symbol ampersand ampersand which you you know in the original japanese that was not censored oh i'm sure not because yeah americans are prudes i would love to play a modded version of final fantasy 7 where those are replaced with actual proper curses uh you probably find a fan translation that does it i'm sure but speaking of fan translations, should we uh, wrap this up and get into the house cleaning? Yes, my good sir. I'm getting better with those transitions. I am a sleepy boy. I will be editing this one tomorrow. Uh, yeah, no, that, that's fine. Maybe tomorrow I'll be able to get a new logo done for the for everything. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that'll be cool, man. I can't I'm, wait to see I'm, what you do. I want to take my time with it, though, because I want to try and update it and make it look nice. I don't know how long it's been since... Uh, the artwork has had a refresh. Uh, it's been like a, a couple years. Has it? I'll try to make it uh, pretty, but keep it true to the original. Uh, so if you would like to check us out on Facebook, although I'm not very active on there, I apologize. Uh, Facebook.com slash JRPG report. You want to check us out over on Twitter slash X is at JRPG report. You want to support the show, uh, which helps uh, very much uh, helps to keep the lights on, things like that. Uh, Patreon.com slash JRPG report. Uh, and you can get your name read out on each and every episode like these wonderful people. Jake W., Jordan K., Kularian, Master Lute, and Kana. You are very much appreciated. Also, if you join the Patreon, you get access to the JRPG report uh, Discord town. Or you can come in and chat with us and uh, you know just talk about jrpgs and anything that's really floating your boat we got a couple different channels for some different stuff come check that out um and also shout out to the steam machine podcast a bi-weekly pc gaming show where me and my buddies nate and willie play through our backlog and try to beat them which right now we are playing through nexamon extinction which is a pokemon like like we you've heard us talk about earlier in this episode and you can catch me and mikolov nate and willie talking about that next week um and if you want to join the Discord for that, where you can find channels for my stuff, for uh, Revival and Extinction, for Team Retro, it is uh, bit.ly slash TSMP Discord, all capital letters. Plug your stuff, my good sir. Team Retro on YouTube, and you can also find me in the Steam Machine, JRPG Report, and Retro Handheld Discords. If you're interested in anything Retro Handheld related, Head on over to RetroHandhelds.gg. You can find a Discord invite there, along with several articles and links to all the, the various YouTubers in that scene. And I just noticed that my eyes are really baggy. I don't know if that has to do with age or fatigue. Maybe or a both. Bit mm. Getting old. Uh, I feel you, man. I'll be uh, 32 next Sunday. Oh, shut up. I'm 42. Ah. I'm a whole, like, 10 years older than you. You got a decade on me, my good sir. I, I do have a decade on you. That's but okay. That, it's a decade of wisdom that you have that I don't. So, mm, more like a just a decade of misinform, mis uh, not a misinformation, a decade of misadventures and uh, bad things. <laughs> uh, That's why I have bags under my eyes. I have way too much crap happening to me. Well, speaking of adventures, my good sir, to everyone Great out there transition. listening, do me the biggest favor: get back out there and level up.